Hey, what's up? Serena here from thriftdiving.com. So this is what the exterior of my home looks like. If you notice, look at the shutters. They don't match. And I'm embarrassed to tell you that I have been living in this home with mismatched shutters and dry rot and chipped paint <laughs> for 10 years. And the reason why is because years ago I painted some, but I couldn't get up high enough to paint the other shutters. So today we're going to take care of the shutters, paint those. We're going to get rid of all the dry rot and the chipped paint, paint the garage door, and we're also going to do some new lighting and fix that broken window. So today's video is being sponsored by Wagner. We're going to use their Flexio 3000 HVLP paint sprayer to do the job. But first I needed to remove the shutters. Now the ones that were on the first floor, I felt totally comfortable removing those. It was not too difficult. I mean, pulling those nails out from the masonry was a little difficult, but I was able to get them off and they were pretty disgusting. So when you do this, this is a great time to clean behind those shutters. But I was gonna hire somebody to do the removal of the upper shutters because I, number one, didn't have a tall 25, 40 foot ladder. <laughs> and the second reason is because I don't go up on ladders enough to feel comfortable. So while I waited on him to arrive, I went ahead, removed what I could and cleaned these windows. Now, if you remember from my drafting table makeover video, I used that cleaner and degreaser. This worked really well to get all of that scum off of the window. And I have actually pressure washed these windows before and they don't come very clean but the cleaner gets them really clean. So if you're looking to do an external refresh, just make sure that you're using a good cleaner. It does brighten things up a lot. So once Troy came with his ladder, <laughs> he climbed up there and removed the other shutters. Thankfully, I was able to get this done in two days because of his help. Otherwise, it could have taken me longer. So once he removed all of those, I needed to clean them. So make sure that you've got a hose nearby so that you can hose them down. But because these were so dirty, if you think about it, they're constantly exposed to dirt and grime. And if you look at these, they were in pretty bad condition. The paint was just, I mean, it was all faded. So clean them off, but make sure that once you hose all of the cobwebs, then you can use a really good cleaner and degreaser. If you don't have a cleaner and degreaser, definitely use just a mixture of water and vinegar. That will work well. But Troy was great to actually clean the windows while I was cleaning all of the shutters. Once you've sprayed this cleaner degreaser, then go ahead and spray this off and make sure that they're ready for paint. So I, while I was letting those dry, it was time to actually spray the exterior. So here I'm just actually connecting the hose to a 30 second cleaner. I just picked it up from the hardware store. And this is a great way to clean your exterior without needing to get up on a ladder or to have a pressure washer. And actually what I learned over the years is that you don't want to pressure wash your siding because that pressure from the water could actually go behind your siding and damage your, your home. So you don't want to do that. So this was perfect. Just spray it on and within 30 seconds to a minute, it starts cutting through the gunk and then just spray it off. And it's amazing what it does for your home. For this project, we're going to be using the Wagner Flexio 3000 HVLP and it comes with its own carrying bag. You get one nozzle for large surfaces and then one smaller one for like cabinets and trim. We're going to stick to the larger one and it also comes with a blower. You'll get this long hose and it's pretty easy to set up out of the box. You just literally attach the handle, it clicks into place. You'll take one end of the hose and put it into the handle and the other side of the hose will go right into the blower. And I like that this kit came with two cup liners because the less you have to clean up at the end of your painting session, the better. And all you do is you take one of the liners, put it into the cup, fold it down, put your paint in and attach it and you're ready to go. Unfortunately, I chose the wrong paint color. <laughs> I actually chose something that was more of a dark gray. This was not the look I was going for. Plus I made a huge mess. So I ended up having to pour it back into the paint can, go back to the hardware store, clean it up first, <laughs> add a little bit of additional black into it. And then thankfully the color that they mixed for me was better. It was a little bit darker and I still ended up making a mess. Anyway, I was able to get it comfortable with the adjustable knobs there. You've got an adjustable pattern with as well as a material flow control. So get comfortable with that. But this kit also comes with a paper template so that you can practice your spray pattern before you start on your real project. I didn't need to do that. I did understand that there is a horizontal and a vertical spray pattern. So I found my 
sweet spot and just got started on this project. Now you'll see that I'm actually not taking a lot of time to do this and I had 12 of them to get through and I got through it pretty quickly and I did two coats. Now I didn't let it dry in between both coats. I was kind of pressed for time because Troy was gonna come back and they needed to get hung. So I actually did two coats, but I made sure that I did it in one sitting. So I went over all of the areas and then looked for any spots that I may have missed, went over it again, and it was a pretty good finish. I didn't have any parts that were drippy or uneven. Overall, I was really, really happy with how the paint sprayer performed, and it was much better than using a brush. So by the time everything dried, Troy came back to install them again. Thank God for him. <laughs> and then the next thing was to take out the inserts because we were going to paint the garage doors. You'll need two people for this. One person to unscrew from the inside and one person to catch the glass and the insert. Big thanks to my husband for helping me with this. And I put a little bit of paper behind there so none of the overspray would go into the garage. The next thing I needed to do was fix this rotted hole. This has been something that's that's just over the years gotten even worse. And there's a product called Bondo. I used this at my mother-in-law's house and I found that it's just very messy. I find it difficult to work with because I've never used it, you know, more than a couple of times. But what you do is you actually remove some of the pieces and then you treat it with this rotted wood restore. So that will actually make the wood a little bit harder and it'll stop the rotting. But then you have to mix together the wood filler and the hardener and I think I just made a huge mess. <laughs> anyway, the point is, is that I wanted to make sure that this wood wouldn't rot anymore. And even though it's not perfect and I do need to work on my Bondo skills, <laughs> I was pleased with the results. It was enough to satisfy my DIY, you know, project. So once that was done, then it was time to move on to taping off to make sure that we don't get any overspray on the brick. There's not a lot of overspray with this paint sprayer, but you want to make sure that you're not getting it on the ground and you're not getting it on your walls. So very carefully apply a little bit of tape. I'm using like some butcher's paper here, whatever. You can actually get this from a big roll of it from any hardware store and make sure that you're taping off the bottom of the garage too. And I'll be honest with you, I was not sure if I was gonna do white or black for these garage doors. I thought maybe black would look very modern, but I tend to be a light and airy and bright kind of person, so white works for me. When I checked the weather, it was going to thunderstorm, so I started moving as quickly as I could to get this done. There was no way that I was going to have all this taped up and then destroy the paper. That was not going to happen. So as I got started, one thing I noticed is that my spray pattern was a little off. And if you notice that, then what you need to do is check your adjustments. I needed to adjust the variable airflow control on the blower. And once I did that, my spray pattern was perfect again, no problems. And you'll wanna make sure that you're about six to 10 inches from the surface and you'll move in either sections or you can go from side to side. Either is fine for me, Sections worked and by overlapping, there was no drips, there was no spills. It actually worked pretty good and I was very happy with how quickly I was able to get through the entire project. Remember, this larger cup here, this larger nozzle is for bigger jobs. And if you've got some smaller jobs, you can use the smaller nozzle. And by changing the horizontal and vertical spray pattern, you can do the trim and then go back to the horizontal and do the doors. So I got it done pretty quickly. And guess what? The rain never even came. So this whole time I'm crossing my fingers, please don't rain, please don't rain. And I'm moving so quickly and sure enough, it didn't rain. <laughs> Thank goodness. So use two coats for even coverage. And then once that was dried, it was time to move on to putting up the other shutters. And I had to use a hammer drill here because I'm drilling into the brick. And remember I was removing some nails and I had to use some concrete screws in order to secure these. I did two screws and I probably will go back and add one more, but two is enough to hold them. So at the end of day two, it was time to clean up the paint sprayer and put all of the excess paint back into the can and take everything apart. Literally, you're just taking off the tube and you're just washing everything out. The nozzle is pretty easy to clean. The cup is easy to clean. Just use a, a bucket of hot soapy water. Once you've wiped everything down and you've gotten the overspray and, and any paint off of your blower and all of these parts, 
then all you need to do is put some hot soapy water in the cup and just run that through the sprayer. So you'll plug it in and literally just let it run into the container until you see no more paint or no more soap and suds. And it's that simple. It probably will take you about 20 minutes. So the next day, the morning of day three, it was time to change the lights. These lights, oh my gosh, they're vintage. They're kind of cool, but it just doesn't fit with my aesthetic anymore. And removing them was not difficult, but it was a little challenging getting this connected. Thankfully, my husband, he is so full of solutions. We were able to figure out how to get this up. The problem is that we had old hardware with a new lamp, but eventually we were able to get it to work. And I love that these will actually cut on automatically when it gets dark. So what started out as an old 1970s tired home, I really had not spent much time on the exterior of my home, now looks a lot more fresh. And eventually, I think down the road, we are gonna get new siding. I would actually like to paint the brick. How do you feel? Do you think painted brick homes is a thumbs up or a thumbs down? Because I really wanna do it. But for now, I will take the new shutters, the painted shutters, Eventually, we're going to get some new landscaping here because I think we need it. But overall, I'm really happy with this. The glass was not very expensive. You can go to Ace Hardware to get new pieces cut. And with some new wall lights, some new paint, it looks better. It has a curb appeal that is not quite so embarrassing. So this is what the house looked like before, before. That's actually my Google Maps picture. <laughs> and this is what it looks like now. So I love this. And my son's who typically don't care anything about my projects, actually came out and complimented me. They said, wow, this looks really good. So if you like this project, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Go back to wagnerspraytech.com to get more information about the products that we used. You can find the link down below to all the products that I used, and I will see you next video.